AM Events Glasgow Limited is a family-run business that specialises in the creation, planning and management of events, whether that be weddings, charity and corporate events, right through to the celebration and party events. We pride ourselves in customer satisfaction and have our clients at the centre of all that we do. Our best boat services allow us to bring your dreams to reality. We offer our services from the smallest of detail to taking on the full event, releasing the worry from our clients and strive on exceeding expectations. Our showroom is open daily. Please pop in to discuss how we can help. Make sure you click the link to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click the notifications button to be notified for when my next podcast goes live. You can also follow me on my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest is. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. Thank you. Boom, we're on. We're Today's on. guest, we've got the King of Scotland himself, James McFadden. How are you, brother? Cheers. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, first of all, just want to thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. Um, you've got your next big movie coming out, um, Robert the Bruce. Uh, the first one, obviously, Braveheart, absolute classic. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's in everybody's top three. But what a film. Uh, the Bruce now, you've got that made after eventually a few years of talking about it. Yeah. How are you feeling about it? I feel good. <laughs> it's, it's out of my hands now. there's nothing more i can do except uh -huh. talk it up yeah and 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 hope that you know uh just i just need people to go to the cinema in the first uh week uh, or two while we've got it out there because if we get the if we get the audiences they're going to open it wider and wider and um and uh you know i just don't want people seeing this film on an iPhone or in the silence of their lonely room, yeah. you know, it's Netflix. not a film like that. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a big film, which you know, I want people to have the experience like they had in Braveheart, the passion, where, where everybody was in the cinema crying and and shouting freedom. And two years later, we had a Scottish Parliament. Mm -hmm. So you know, right now, there's it's such a funny time because we've got this crazy Brexit stuff going on and the 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 idea of of independence is within our grasp, but we're so divided as a country, and mm -hmm. I just feel like we've got to kind of unite the clans yeah. and, <laughs> and 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 you know the collective yeah. experience of a cultural event like a movie, where you're emotionally touched, you know, makes you remember that we're all humans mm -hmm. and we're all in it together, and we're not that far apart. We all want the same thing. We want the dream. I think mm -hmm. we want decent health service we want yeah. you know our kids to grow up and go to good schools and all of these things and i i i think you know we need to we need to be masters of our own fate yeah because you're very passionate you're clearly you're all up for the referendum and a free scotland do you think this film can give maybe spark the passion back into people to maybe fight for a free scotland and a free country again i i i mean my my only example is what happened in in Braveheart was that people went to the cinema, and and the SNP stood outside the cinema with leaflets afterwards, and the SNP were nowhere on the map at that time. They were a dusty old book in a corner which nobody really paid attention. They'd be banging on about this for decades and decades, and nobody listened to them. And suddenly, within two years, we had a Scottish Parliament, and there they were. And so it really shows you what the power of a cultural event like a movie that it can get inside you and it can do things which no politician speech can can do it can mm -hmm. touch you in places and remind you of your own humanity and so you know i've made the best movie i can bringing together the elements which took 12 13 years and i've lived in a cave for most of it because i couldn't get it made for 12 or 13 years. And I'm glad about that now because I wrote it with my uh, writing partner, Eric Belgau, in 2006. And we could have made that film and got it out in 2007 and it would been and gone, just another movie. But 12 years went by and I, I kind of gave up. I, I felt, 
I became Robert the Bruce in the cave. I, I had despair. I was like, this is never going to happen anymore. Mm. I gave up on it. And then uh, what happened in the last few years and the fact that we then did make it, suddenly I turned and I, I went, wait a minute, it's not about me deciding when things are supposed to happen. It's about the world and, and design and destiny in some way. It's things which are greater than us. Mm -hmm. and, and I was very humbled suddenly because here I am now with the movie Independence. Really, you know, we're looking at, at events down in Westminster with uh, uh, Brexit where Scotland has voted twice very clearly and said we want to remain in the, e in the EU. We, decided, we chose to try and do it in 2014. We said it very clearly. We stayed in the union because of that. And just lately, we did it again. So the EU. Yeah. And we've said again, we, our voice is saying we want to remain in. And yet, the other half of the country wants to go. Well, be our guest. It's time for us to step through that door of independence. We're the last ones out. Mm -hmm. We've been very polite, and we've let every other colonial country out of the door. It's our turn. I think it will happen, and I think it will. I definitely think. I think people. There's going to be a shift happening, and I believe Scotland will be a free country because we've kind of went backwards. We're kind of back in the 1300s. We're kind of back in um, the older days, but I believe things will make a shift, and I believe big things will change, and I believe Scotland will be a free country. You've had a great career, Angus. You've had massive following. Braveheart nominated ten Oscars, won five. Eleven. Eleven. Oh <laughs> no! Edit that bit out. <laughs> um, great following. How did it all, how, all begin for you? You grew up in Edinburgh. How was your life then, right back from the start? Well, I lived in Collington with uh, my grandparents. Were, were, uh, well, actually, they, 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 they started out in Barhead and then moved through to Edinburgh and lived in Collington uh, up until they passed at the end of uh, the 90s. So to hear that. And so I, I, I've lived here most of my life and went to Edinburgh University um, and... Uh, uh, was studying to do politics in 1983 and then a, a wee voice sort of went, you know, you should really go and do something else. And I kind of went, what? But I listened to the voice, changed my course, started doing theater and got into acting. And I never knew why. And this is another example of saying, you know, something, something which is bigger than you is I, I never understood why I, I, that voice talked to me like that and why I listened even. But then in 2003, it all became very clear because I'd have been a Labour uh, politician. I'd have been somehow towing the party line and I would have had to make a choice, either uh, resign and, and hold on to my soul or um, uh, lose my job uh, and lose my job or, you know, tow the party line and support a, 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 an illegal invasion into the Middle East, which has caused chaos and has put us into a situation now with the unforeseen consequences of um, uh, having created incredible refugee problems, hatred all over the globe, and all for what? Profit, really. It's money, it all comes down to money. It's all yeah, money yeah, making. Yeah. And, and uh, money making by an elite and, and money which none of us ever see, unless you're working in a factory which is making those munitions and you get yeah. whatever the minimum wage yeah, is. Yeah, the most valuable currency is your time in this planet and we give our time away very, very cheaply. We don't value our worth. When you made the transition then from university to go to acting, was that a scary part for you? No, I always had, I had have that belief? great, great belief. Yeah. I was, you know, you're almost stupid. You're, you're very naive and mm -hmm. stupid to go into, into a profession like that because so few people actually do get even a shot at it, let alone if you can turn that shot into a, a 30 or 40 year career, it's, it's the roller coaster is very rarely up at the top with 11 nominations, like you say, yeah. and an Oscar nominated movie. Most of the time you're sort of, you know, pushing the carriage along, trying to get, trying to, you're actually pushing it up the, the, yeah, next, uh, the hole. You've yeah. got to keep progressing. You've got to keep raising the bar. You've got no matter what it is, whether it's 10 Oscars or 12 Oscars, you've got to push the bar because I always say, if you think you've made it, you only took two steps back. When was your yeah. first break? I mean, my first really, the, the, the job I was really pleased with was, was a, a job in Glasgow, BBC Scotland, uh, taking over the asylum, which they're actually airing again uh, June the 29th, starting here in, uh, on BBC at the end of this month. And that was a wonderful show about uh, mental illness uh, set in a, in a 
in a, an, an asylum which is now closed down uh, just outside of Glasgow, uh, written by Donna Francis Child and directed by David Blair. That was a wonderful experience. We actually, you know, didn't have trailers. We 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 were in costume all day, and we were in the uh, in the institution with the patients. We were, you know, hanging out with them. How does that? They were incredibly amused by by us. It was yeah. very funny. How's that in the old mindset then? Being in that environment to get right into character, and you're yeah. there. Yeah, you, yeah. It's, it's like you don't you don't. You, there's no trailer to go to. You're, does that help you're your out. your acting? Does that help your craft when you're actually in it, living it? With people, yeah, who have, yeah, yeah, you, you you know you see you see these you see these 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 people who, you know, uh, who are very fragile, emotionally fragile people who've obviously had reactions to the way reality is and have had their dreams broken and their you see these broken souls in these places and you go there but for the grace of God go I because and I was a lucky one because I got to fulfill my dream which was becoming. Mm-hmm. An actor and, and joining the circus, as it were, and doing what I'm doing right here. I mean, if I hadn't been an actor playing that role, God knows, I, I might have been one of those patients because I, I can't imagine uh, going through this life without doing a job which I actually love doing mm. and 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 being fulfilled in that way. Yeah, and I think it must yeah, be a terrible thing. I think that's a great thing to touch on. Follow your dreams and your passion, but it's yeah. not going to be easy. It's not, not life's not easy, but if you're stuck in a job that you don't like, you're doing something that you hate, then it's it's only you that can change that. It's only a very small percentage of this world to take risks, and yes. clearly your risks have paid off. Even though sometimes when you live that life, the Oscar films and it doesn't really feel as big as what people see from the screen. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Because you're actually living it. So when you got your, when did uh, Mel Gibson come calling for Braveheart? Well. That was another funny story. I hadn't worked for nine months after I'd done this uh, show at the mental institution. And I got a call from Patsy Pollock saying, you're coming in for the English prince. Uh, now, I know you're not going to want to play him because you, you're going to want to play Robert the Bruce, but forget it because there's a, m- a movie star is already cast. So forget that. <laughs> <laughs> you're already shooting your dreams down. So, uh, so I read the script and of course I wanted to play. That was my role. And I go in and like, you know, been crazy you know at the time i i just sort of went into the room with with this movie star and you know golden mal gibson all worked out and must he looked like a greek god and um and uh he said so you are you want to talk about this uh english prince i said no and he kind of looked at the casting director what do you mean no i said well i'm not i mean you know Look, I wish you all the best with that role, but that's not my role. My role is Robert the Bruce, and I'm going to explain to you why. And I sat there for an hour and a half talking to him and giving him these ideas and talking about, because I'd been brought up with stories of Robert the Bruce. My father had told me about the spider and all of this. So I was like talking uh, talking the talk, and, and uh, after an hour and a half, and the cast director's like, God, he's fucked up. And after an hour and a half, he said, okay, well, you sure you don't want to talk about the other guy? I said, no, and I wish you all the best with it. And I left and went back to my tiny little, you know, flat in London and like was kicking myself because, you know, I, I just basically passed on a, on a roll. And um, 10 days later, I get a phone call. Okay, uh, Mel wants to see you again. Uh, I'm like, oh God, what have I done? And I go in and uh, he says, uh, so you, uh, you want to come... And uh, and play with us? I said, well, what do you mean? He kind of looked at me like I'm an idiot, an idiot and said, well, you want to come and play the role of what? And I said, well, yeah. And so it turned out that the actor who had wanted, who'd been offered the role, um, wanted to, there was another Scottish film at the time, Rob Roy. And there was another role, there was a role in that, which this actor really wanted the role, which Tim Roth ended up playing. And uh, so he was trying to get that role. And so he let the date go by, by which he should have accepted Robert the Bruce. So the offer was withdrawn and given to me. Shit, man. That's how, that's that's how shit story, goes down. Man. That's how shit goes down. I didn't and know that's that. Happened. That's not the, it's not the last time uh-huh. either. I've done that. I've tried that one several times in Hollywood and, and it worked two more times. But that's, again, not just accepting for what yes. is offered to you. And I think that's a great thing for anybody watching. You don't need to accept you've obviously you've believed it and the law of attraction comes into play that's also been in your mind that you were going to get that part yeah that's phenomenal story it's a form of madness yeah. but it's like enthusiasm it's positive yeah 
energy. It's uh-huh. pure, positive, mad, like I believe. And it's not just in yourself. It's like you want to contribute to, to the beauty of what you're seeing. You know, yeah. It doesn't happen all the time. Because most of the stuff you get is shite. <laughs> and you really yeah. don't want to do it, but you got the bills to pay, you yeah. know? Did you so realize? You up doing yeah. that. Like did you, I did saw and yeah. I, I did it to pay the bills. And I did one and I was like, I'm never doing another. Yeah. Did you realize how big Braveheart was going to be at the time? Uh, no. Um, uh, we, we thought we were, um, uh, you know, I mean, the, 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 the general um, idea, which I didn't really be, uh, agree with, was that we were, there were two films and one of them was very well written, was being directed by a tasteful director, Michael Caton Jones, and it was going to be the far superior film, Rob Roy. And ours was like the cheesy Hollywood epic, you know, swords and sandals. Um, but it didn't turn out that way because Mel's just, you know, he's a very, he's not, he's a, he's a visual genius and he, he knows about emotion and, you know, he's a very fragile person himself. So he, you know, was able to, to, to turn something which was not particularly great on the page, but he was able to like cast it correctly and, direct it and bring out emotion. He was very open as well to allowing you to do, to try things. So, you know, not to say that the film, the script was, was, you know, mediocre, but that was the, that's how it was perceived. Yeah. So we, we really didn't know until one day we, we were brought into a trailer on set and we were sat down to watch the last 15, 10, 15 minutes of the movie, Mm -hmm. starting with uh, that moment where they're all waiting on the battlefield and I've got that voiceover and they played this for us. And we watched it, and you, you can imagine we came out of it all in silence, going, "Holy fuck, that was that's, this is kind of special, right?" Mm-hmm. And we were all looking at each other, and I was like, "Yeah, but how are they going to improve on the music? Because they they'd used the Ennio, Ennio Morricone soundtrack from uh, the Mission, and it just fits so well." I was like, "How are they going to improve on that?" But of course, they did. The music in Braveheart was beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. Who is it, James? Um, James, uh, New- away, James, James Newton. James, uh, yeah. Who's the guy that does the right sort of music for like Gladiator and Braveheart? Yeah, Phenom- yeah. Phenomenal. I mean, he often repeated himself after that, yeah. but that was like one of his great. Yeah, Titanic great stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, music was phenomenal. When you did, when you read the script, obviously the being the traitor for William Wallace. How was that part? Because we're watching that half yeah. the whole whole of Scotland must have hated you just watching that scene when. Yeah. yeah, William Wallace, you turned them over. How yeah. was you, how were you reading well, that? I just got to reiterate that it's all fiction. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. <laughs> but it makes a great movie. Yeah, that part was fiction. Yeah, 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 yeah. But well, how I mean, you? On, on some level, I mean, you know, I'm sure it didn't play out like that exactly, but it's sort of physicalizing the the concept of him being uh, somebody who was sort of sat on the outside and and didn't really get his his hands dirty. Yeah. Whereas the the film which we've we've just made is about the man getting his hands dirty. Mm-hmm like getting blood on his hands and uh, to the point where he can't take it anymore. Yeah. So how were you, when, because at the end, obviously the passion about at Bannockburn, um, when people watch that, it gave them the kind of inspiration to go, be proud to be Scottish, basically. Yeah. Um, and I think you, people kind of lost that spot. But when you wasn't watched, that funny that the same at the same time, Train Spotting came out and they were going, "It's shite, Scotland's shite." <laughs> and then we had our movie, yeah. you know, with Mel going, "No, Scotland, Scotland." Yeah, it's great freedom. We had uh, we had the the, the the schizophrenic experience yeah, of two voices yeah. in our head at the same time. <laughs> Do you think um, Mel was that part for him for Braveheart, William Wallace? I think so. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's. He's he's a, you know I like him when he plays these tortured heroes. He, he's so good at it, like Lethal Weapon and uh, uh, that film uh, uh, Year of Living Dangerously, you know, and and Braveheart, obviously. I mean, he had he he wanted another actor. He wanted to cast Jason Patrick, who would have been fantastic as well. But Jason didn't have the star star power. Yeah, you know, and they wanted they wanted if if Mel wanted to direct it, he had to play the role. I'm I'm shocked that he he was sleeping like he wasn't even sleeping. The guy he was like three hours a night. Uh-huh. He would see him walking down the street and outside of Dublin in the middle of the night because he just couldn't sleep. Just, you know, because he was filled. But that's what it is to be a director. You 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 don't get a lot of downtime. Yeah, just passion, just yeah, to create passion, something, passion. just creating something and leaving a legacy. Yeah. Where. So how was that then after the film? It clearly shot you into superstardom, A-list material. How did that affect you mentally? Was that a good buzz, a roller coaster, or was that a lot of downward after that? Uh, I, um, I mean, I'm Scottish, so 
it all comes with a bit of a grain of salt, you know. Yeah. Uh, I tend to. I, I, I'm. I'm not a very good guy at doing the parties and all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I tended to steer away from all of that, but it did give me opportunities to play other other parts, mm -hmm. which was great. It opened me. I was able to move to Hollywood and 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 start and and basically, you know, to build on a career with you know some ups and plenty of downs but you know that's life that's, that's life. life you've worked with some serious actors christian bale yeah. matt damon yeah um sandra bullock yeah i i would i would i also add <laughs> Mel anthony, Gibson, hopkins. anthony hopkins i was <laughs> going to yeah. yeah. susan sarandon uh -huh. and john turturro uh, uh vanessa redgrave Larry, uh, Bill ray, Murray. Ray, ray, who's the guy ray liotta ray ray liotta yeah from oh, Goodfellas. Yeah. How's, um, that's rubbing shoulders with some of the best coming from Edinburgh. And it's so much fun. Yeah. Do you love it? You get on set and you're, yeah. and you're pals. It's like, you know, acting is, uh, being in the movies in general is like a circus. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you show up, uh, hopefully you're on location. So you're all staying in the same hotel and you, you, you know, eating and drinking in the bar yeah. in the evenings and you Growing really get bonds. to know people well. But if you're shooting, you know, close to home, you go home at night. But nevertheless, you know, you're you're hanging out with people who you've admired your whole life in movies, and and there you are sitting, you know, talking to them, and and that they're, they're they're, you know, either they've got feet of clay and they're really disappointing human beings, or you know, which, <laughs> yeah, which yeah, is like yeah. it's so Majority disappointing. People, but yeah, yeah, so disappointing. You put people on a pedestal. Oh my god. Yeah, and they're turning out to be wankers. Shocking. <laughs> shocking. But, yeah. uh, but then you know, occasionally there's some really beautiful, beautiful souls, and you just yeah. like, and, and and you end up, you know, sometimes occasionally making friends, and you swap your number, and you like call them, and you, you know, you you, you stay in touch for for the next few decades. Yeah, because it must be it, it can be a lonely journey as well. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And everybody kind of want a piece of you, like me today, try to get an interview, and other everybody's kind of want a piece of you, and not try to find out how yeah. things behind, because people see you as a character because they see you on the big screen right and don't see you as a human being and i think that's where a lot i don't of mind not being seen yeah. as a human being I mean, <laughs> you know it's like i'm an actor i i, yeah. I, I don't really have an identity uh -huh. in some way mm -hmm. you know i'm the sum of everything i've ever played and 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 it's the 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 exploration is the mind you know like mm. what is the human condition I, I, we're, we're made up of so many different uh, opposite, and, yeah, and you know what I mean? Energies and yeah, I, I don't even yeah. know what what a human being is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, who's the best actor you've ever worked with? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's I have to kind of say Anthony Hopkins. Uh, he's he's a he's a uh, and 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 there again, like what a troubled man, you know. Uh, hmm. But beautiful, like you sit on. I would go and, and sit and watch him preparing. For what was, I did Titus with him. And he was doing Shakespeare. And, he, you know, he would go and sit on this rock and say, is this where I'm shooting today? I'm shooting here? Right, well, I'll just sit here then. And I'm, uh, I'm getting ready. Go ahead. And, like, they would start putting the camera up and doing the lighting. And he would sit there for, like, an hour and a half. And I would just go and sit, like, just off and watch what he was doing. And he'd be running the lines and everything. And, and I would just watch him. And, and eventually they would go and uh, action. And there'd be no change. He would just start saying the lines. And oh, it was fascinating because it was almost like watching a vampire because he didn't put out energy. He took whatever was inside the camera and he pulled the, the light and the, and the darkness and the energy as if he knew that the audience was there. He pulled it inside him and said, come and look inside me and see whatever you want to see because I am but a mirror mm -hmm. of you. And, you know, and it was like, oh, that's a big lesson right there. Is that like method acting? acting? But no, that's not. That's, just... that's, 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 I don't think that is because I don't think, I think it's just, I think it's just sort of relaxation yeah. and, and opening yourself up. It's almost like a guru-esque type yeah. acting method. You know, it can often be like, uh, let me work myself up into a, yeah. into a state, you know, God damn it. Stella! You know, and like yeah. it's all like it's been kind of bastardized by yeah. people who think they've got to get into some kind of emotional state and go and kill a cat, mm -hmm. you know, just to get into, into character. Yeah. And how about the main set relaxation then? Relaxation and yeah. a sense of, of you're going to be okay, you know, when you get into, live. when you get into character, what's the longest you've been in character for? 
Do you stay in character long yourself? I don't really stay in character. No. No. I, I, like, again, I say, you know, I don't even know what a human being is and I don't know what a character is because I'm, I'm either, either it's in me or it isn't. And so r relaxation is the way in which to access it. If you're trying too hard to present something to somebody, then you, all you're doing is, is, is accessing what your knowledge and what you can do. If, if you relax and let it, then you actually end up surprising yourself. It's like mm -hmm. not knowing the lines too well because you've got to find them. Otherwise, it sounds like you've learned them and you're just saying lines. Yeah. You got to let it happen. In, in the, in the, when they go action, that's magic moment. And you have to let it fucking be and let it happen to you. Mm -hmm. You got to feel it. Yeah. And, you know, and yeah, 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 yeah. it can also be, it can get too, you know, it can get too much as well. You got to keep a rhythm and, and listen to people and say, can you pick it up a little bit, a little faster? Yeah. So, yeah, of course. Because, you know, you do it many times. So, so it keeps changing every time. You yeah. know, Meryl Streep, apparently, they say every take is different. And, and, you know, I would say that's the best acting because every take is different. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. You have to surprise yourself. Can you switch off okay after? Of course. Yeah. Because it kind of, again, it's some people, like Daniel Day-Lewis and stuff as well, they yeah. go deep, deep into deep waters to become that character. You know, we haven't really heard him talk about it. So a lot of that is other people saying that. Yeah. So we don't know actually uh -huh. how Daniel Day-Lewis operates. Mm -hmm. he, he may find it really easy to turn on. He just doesn't comment on that because it's great to create the myth yeah. of, the, of that, you know. Getting like people, people thinking. Yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. And whether it's true or not, you know, mm -hmm. like Brando story. was the easiest guy to get along with. He like turn it on and off. It's like, oh, it's just relaxation. Did Brando ever read a script or did just read line by line at each scene? He had a, an earpiece towards the end because he couldn't remember his yeah. lines. Some folk. What's your what's your favorite film yourself, Angus? Of who? Anybody? Your greatest film that you would watch? God, it's very difficult to to do that because. I would, I mean, there's a list of, I'd have to start with 10. I mean, being there, yeah. uh, the performance by Peter Sellers, you talk about somebody inhabiting a character. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest, I think, inhabitation of a character. So shocking to watch him because we were all used to him doing the Pink Panther and doing silly voices. Yeah. He was nothing in that. And, and people said it was so freaky because it was actually him because he was nothing. And I, I have a friend called Philippe Morat who was going to, do a film with him, an Australian director who was going to do a film with him playing Hitler, um, which I ended up playing, doing instead, because um, he, because, because Sellers was so crazy that he showed up. This guy, this was '73. He showed up at his house, and and Peter Sellers came to the door dressed completely as Hitler, and was talking with a German accent and everything, and so come into my house and everything, and like. Philip was like, this is fucking weird. <laughs> uh, and, it's, and he had, a, he had a, a woman who was like, would you like some tea here? Mm -hmm. um, uh, would you make us some, some tea, uh, Heidi? And, you know, the tea was brought. And as, as Philip stayed there for a couple of hours, mm -hmm. he suddenly noticed that Peter Sellers' accent slowly shifted because Philip is from Australia. And he suddenly, and Hitler was sitting there going, yeah, all right, mate. <laughs> yeah, mate I, I find that, uh, you know, yeah, good, good on you, yeah. mate. And like he completely changed. So, so once again, we get back to that thing of what, what is your identity? It's yeah. actually fun to like explore the, it's like a, it's like the, the ocean a goes wave. out and comes back yeah. in. Like this, it's utter freedom. Yeah. You know? Goes out at night, comes back in. There are no lines. And so that was fascinating to me to, to think about Peter Sellers as somebody like that with, with, you know, and it's a dangerous thing too, because he verged on, madness in the end mm -hmm. but then he had too much power you know he became too famous and he couldn't handle it how, back to that yeah. thing of handling fame yeah how, do you think that people struggle with it a lot of drink and drugs come into play and good lord yeah and people yeah. search for fame and they think if i get all this attention and life's complete not realizing that it's not really it's not fucking anything yeah it's not, it doesn't it's not anything within where it's something to be proud of listen if you have a great career and you have success but Again, yeah. it's try to keep raising the bar to keep achieving things. And you've been in the acting game, what, 30 odd years now? Yeah. Still producing. Yeah. Um, how was James O'Hara? The, hey, the mad Irishman. David. And, David. Uh, David, David O'Hara. And uh, Braveheart. Madness. 
I don't know. I, I, I don't think I can tell the story <laughs> about Davy O'Hara on that. I mean, he was that character. We uh -huh. would go, we would, you know, we would go out, you know, drinking in the evening, but we would get home by a certain point, and we'd all pile on the on on the on the bus to go and go to work in the morning, and and we'd go to Davy O'Hara's apartment, and people would ring on the door, and like he wasn't there, and then he'd come ambling down the road from some. I'll be just <laughs> getting the bus like, stinking uh -huh. of alcohol going, uh -huh. all right, how are you doing? <laughs> and like people were terrified yeah. of him. But it was the character. It you was played so, a great part as well. Amazing. Yeah, the mad Irishman. Yeah. So obviously Braveheart now you've, is it a sequel, Robert the Bruce? Is it a follow-up to Braveheart? It's definitely not a sequel. It's, it's the story of, which I always wanted to, I was always very disappointed that we never told the story of, well, what happened after William Wallace died? It just, did, did the history just end? Or was there a guy who became a king? And how did he become a king? And what was the process of him? What did he have to go through to become that? And that was the most fa fascinating part. Because when you look at the story of the spider in the cave, you break it down. The man went into a cave to die. He gave up mm -hmm. despair. He died metaphorically. He had a conversation with a spider. I mean, you look at, the, at, uh, at all psychology, and, so, and the spider is the symbol of schizophrenia. So I was like, well, that's fascinating to me, mm -hmm. because he obviously heard voices in there, and like he wasn't able to die. There was a voice talking to him. And what's worse than death? Madness. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't losing control die. of the mind. You, you're like so he had to leave the cave. Mm -hmm. So what was the conversation which went on in there? And and um, what what happened to him? That to me is the is the really fascinating story and I'm actually writing a play about that. Yeah. I think I'm going to tackle the role a third time and put it on stage because Good. it's the story of the spider yeah. and and the vo and that in that one I want to do the voice of modern Scotland. I want to I want to I want the the web made out of you know whatever it is with a guy on it and and he's a he's a modern day scott you know talking in the glass region you know like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm your man and everything you know <laughs> fuck, you know i went there to the pub and everything's mm -hmm. fucked you know and his dream is broken and everything and that's the voice mm -hmm. and 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 then this guy falls into the room mm -hmm. and this guy who's the spider sees robert the bruce and they start having a uh, they, they have a debate in there but this, this guy, the spider, thinks that that's the spider. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, because he's seeing a spider on, on yeah. his roof. So it's Bruce, like, it's, 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 bridging the, it's bridging the 700 uh -huh. years in a way. Yeah, so and when William Wallace got captured, when he got captured and took to London, Bannockburn was eight years later? Uh, I think it was, yeah, that would have yeah, been it was about, about that. Yeah. No, th 1314, wasn't it? Yeah, so. 1314, there were, there were a good... Seven, eight yeah. years, yeah. Yeah, so when the Bruce then, so the film that you've created now, because you've produced this film. Yeah. Um, where does it start from? How accurate is the, is it like Braveheart, but fiction, or is it straight down, is it everything that Scotland's about and how they created their freedom? Well, it's, uh, I, I wanted to tell a, a, a more intimate story of a family. Uh, these, uh, this, this family, because uh, really what I wanted to tell was an anti-war film. I wanted to, I don't want to glorify it, you know. I wanted to tell a story about the consequences of what happens. So there's this, this family of crofters, this, our real hero in this, this is, uh, our heroine is, is this woman called Morag, who's a crofter. She works off the land, brutal, brutal condition. She's got three children. They're all, one of them is her son. The other two are, are children of two brothers who've, and these three men have all died in f either fighting for Wallace or the Bruce in, in different wars. So these are the consequences of war. These children and this woman left to fend for themselves in brutal conditions. These are the real heroes of, of, of this film, which I, I want to tell. And they find this man close to death because he's able to get out of that cave because He's not going to die in there. He's going to go mad. So he gets out and he falls over and, they, and these people find him and they bring him back and they realize they've got the king. Now, this man has got a price on his head now. So they also have a price on his head. If they want to save him, they want to bring him back to life. Uh, but the mother decides, you know, we're not going to take, this is our king. We're not taking a, uh, the son wants, let's take the money and move to the town, mum, and be rich. I'm sick of this life. 
The mother says, this, you know, all of, our, all of your fathers died, and 10,000 men have died for, for this man, and was it all for nothing? So the hand of destiny comes in in this, in this story. And that's a very important part of this, is, is, is timing and destiny. Like people often think, you know, it's got to happen in my lifetime. It's going to happen now. I'm going to make it happen. And that's all, it's, it's, it's always very arrogant in a way because, because there's, a, there's the hand of God in things. There's a mighty hand at work. And sometimes you've got to let things, mm -hmm. you know, unfold at their own speed. Yeah. And I'm guilty of it myself because I sat around for years getting more and more angry and desperate because I couldn't get the film made. But here we yeah. are and it's happening yeah. now. And I feel like I learned my own personal lesson of a mighty hand is at work because the film is being released at the moment when it needs to be released, yeah. when people, you know, c can, can seek some kind of uh, uh, illumination in a way, you know, because I, I'm, the film is, is you know, I, I go to bed every night going, how do you unite the clans in this country? People are so <laughs> divided right now. Like, how do you unite them? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that is the role of, of, of culture, in a way. It's not the role of a politician who's going to toe his line and he's going to toe his line and never the twain shall meet. How do you do it? You have to touch people in their mm -hmm. hearts and you have to get people back to remembering that we're all human beings breathing the same air, drinking the same water, and, and those are the important things. Yeah. yeah. And so you've got to tell a story where we all remember where we came from. Powerful, mate. I'm ready to go into fucking battle just now, listening <laughs> to you. <laughs> um, because it took you 12 years to write. Were you nervous at finishing it? Or were you scared? Or was that, what was it? Or were you just a no, perfectionist? No, I wrote it very quickly. Oh, did but you? it took 12 years to make because nobody would, would take it. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised at that. Well, it, you know, it was, once again, it's the timing. I was surprised. I was pissed off. Mm -hmm. But it was, it's about the timing. I couldn't ask for a better time. Yeah. For it to come out than now. Mm -hmm. Brexit. Mm -hmm. the, the, the absolute madness of what's going on in the land right now. What do you think the state of Scotland does just now? I think it's sort of on the, on the brink. It's, we're at a crossroads. It's, it's a, a crossroads. breaking point. And this is where you meet the devil, you know. Mm -hmm. They always say in, in ancient myth, this is, the crossroad is where you meet the devil. Mm -hmm. And he comes with an offer for your soul. And we're right there right now because you look at the choices that we have. And it's like you go one way where you, you, you're basically going to privatize and sell off the whole lot and hand the keys of the kingdom over to a bunch of charlatans liars, proven liars, only out for themselves. And they've showed it again and again. Or you're going to be progressive and you're going to move forward with the progressive agenda, which serves the people mm. and the commonwealth. That was the thing which Bruce talked about all the time. He was like our first progressive king in a way, maybe the first progressive king of all time. He talked about the commonwealth, how the land belonged to the people and only the people. Mm -hmm. And we lost that. We lost that in 1707 with the Act of Union because before that, what's fascinating to me about the, 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 the Scottish history is we actually, uh, Scotland actually refused slave ships into its ports until 1707. We wouldn't have them. It was like a fucking evil. We don't, we don't do that where we come from. Mm -hmm. And that changed. And when that changed, we kind of lost our soul and we've like wandered and we've become what we became, you know, this sort of bitter, angry. Uh, Who was it that agreed then in the 1700s to join together with the Union? Yeah. Who was that? Who's, was it a king, queen? It was, it was no, no, nobility, it was the, the land. Owners. Was that? Yeah. And there was a deal done. It was, it was a sort of a, one of those um, too big to fail schemes, the Darien scheme, which, uh, which c created a situation. Mm -hmm. And and the landowners put all of their money into it, and suddenly the 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 the, 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 the things which they had invested in were going for pennies on the pound. So they were bought up, and England bought up the Scottish debt, and said, "We'll we'll uh, we'll wipe it off the thing if you join us." And a deal was done with the devil. Yeah, I mean, the king, the English king, was the guy who actually killed all of the the uh, Scottish colonial the the people who went to Panama to try and set up their own sort of, you know, paradise on earth. They were a bit naive and foolish because they took Bibles and wigs to sell to people and like, who the hell needs Bibles and wigs? 
in the tropics, I can tell you. <laughs> you, 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 you know, you're running around naked because mm -hmm. it's too bloody hot. Mm -hmm. You don't need Bibles and wigs there. Mm -hmm. So they were, there was a naivete and also there was still a divided kingdom because you had the, you, you had, the, this was right after Culloden and, and you had the, um, the, you know, the Jacobites versus the Protestants at the time and, mm -hmm. you know, the terrible murders done on behalf of the English king. Yeah. And the English king then t told the French, the Spanish, the, the Dutch, nobody does trade with those Scots. So they were left to their own devices and um, died. Yeah. Scotland's such a powerful country as well. It's got yeah. so much wealth. And I think people are brainwashed to, f to think we're, we're not good enough to be a free country. I don't think people believe that. I, I'm saying that, I, I said it before, I think the shift has happened. I believe Scotland will be an independent country. Yeah. Um, I just don't know how long it's going to be. God, come on. Yeah. It's good to happen soon. Yeah. <laughs> I am really worried about the 31st of October because uh -huh. there's, I, I just feel like you can't trust these guys. There's a, there's a line there which if we let it go over that, yeah. they'll take that as a sign but of who weakness. the fuck can we trust in politics? Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a difficult one. The people who lead this country, should they be leading the country? No, of course they shouldn't. Do you know what I mean? No. It's, um, they don't care about the people who are working, slaving every day, because that's what people are, slaves. They're basically that's slaves, right. do you know what I mean? Just living to die yeah. with no purpose, just going through the motions, getting lied to constantly. But again, I'll say I, I believe the shift is happening. I believe that the spark will come, Scotland will become free and independent, where big things can happen, and then you can, you've got your own choices. You've got your own choices to create, because... Suicides on the rise in Scotland, homelessness, um, drug addiction, everything's rising because people are struggling. So they're searching everything external to try and fulfill an emptiness yeah. and something that's eating their soul that they know is fucking wrong and they don't know what it is. I just think that, yeah, I just believe, I believe, man, that, that people, guys like yourself as well, even your story from being Edinburgh and having the career path and fighting and believing what you believe in, I'm going to get that part, I'm going to do this and do that, and you've achieved it all. And now we're sitting here 12 years later with... I don't think I've achieved the, it all. Not yet, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you, not yet. When no. the Bruce comes out and we get a free, free Scotland, then we've, we can sit with the feet up and get the cigars out, Angus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. It's like, I, I never d dared to even dream about this back in the mm -hmm. 80s. And now it's like just there, and it's like, really? Do we even dare to even hope? Do you, how do you think people's going to react to your movie? But I, I, I hope that people are going to be uh, moved. I just, I just want people to be emotionally touched. And who's all involved in that? Because you said Lulu's involved yeah. in one of the songs as well. Lulu sang the, 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 the last song of the film. Yeah. She saw the film and was, and was in tears. So she, she said, I'm, I'm doing the last song. And I was, so I was really pleased because she's, you know, she's a legend. Yeah, it's Lulu. Yeah, she's a legend, yeah, she's a legend man. Um, who's who, a beautiful that, lady. Yeah. Beautiful. Is um, what other actors and actresses anyone we've heard of that's been uh, involved? Uh, we we have we have uh, Kevin McNally's is in there, Jared Harris. We have Anna Hutchinson, who's a uh, an actress from New Zealand, and um, the the kids who are brilliant, who are Californian, and I sh I really shouldn't be putting this out there because everybody's going to be like I'm listening to their accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and I was on them every day with uh -huh. the accent, uh, and and I, I, you know, I've heard people have said, you know, they 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 thought they were from the, from Scotland. So yeah, that's good. I'm, uh, you know. So what's all the really dates for people who can get involved? Because we're in Glasgow, Edinburgh, Dundee. Yeah. Um, what's the release start date? Is it the 26th for June? 28th. 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 That's the, the date, the go date, basically. Sterling, it's on as well. Mm -hmm. so. Sterling will be a great, that's a great place to yeah. put a screening on. Yeah. Um, where can people get tickets? Uh, they get a link. He'll get a link and put it on yeah. at the bottom of this yeah, yeah, for sure. episode where people can get involved. Yeah, I mean, most of the, most of the cinemas are Odeon cinemas or or the View cinemas. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, people will be excited because I seen the trailer actually yesterday. Yeah, it's powerful stuff. Yeah, it's powerful. Is house and music? Is that we would touch a brave heart in there? Bagpipes uh, and drums and yeah, I mean you know, Scot Scottish, yeah. stirring, <laughs> stirring stuff. <laughs> Because, uh, yes, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it, mate. And because, again, films like, you were in Saw, Free? Yeah. How did that one come about? Because that's a total... See, you just picked the, my, my least favourite movie. Oh, is that? <laughs> I, quite, I liked that film. Well... I liked that film. To me, that's like the negativity of, like, you know, the, <laughs> people, you know, doing those... I, I, being on a set like that, it's like, oh... Is I, that I'm so... I'm never doing another of these. How, I got right out of the contract. Oh, did you? I couldn't do another one. 
I thought I was. I, I had I, to do number four, but I, I said, you, you, you shoot me. You're not torturing me or making me hang out to like, <laughs> tear my insides out, or pull, pull my, my shit outside of my, like, yeah. whatever you're sick imagining. You, you get to shoot me and I'm out in four hours. I actually thought that. I thought, I thought I was a brilliant for them. But it was yeah, a weird so kind of, like, again. So plans for the future. Just and, before. Uh, and in fact, that was the number one movie. This is exactly yeah. what you just said. Yeah. I, I was in LA and it was, I, I, I had the number one movie in the cinemas, two or three thousand. And I was sitting at home just feeling like a pile of crap mm -hmm. because, like you say, it, I didn't feel proud of it. And it was, and, and you've, you chase the, the thing and it's, it's on the outside of you and you, you, you've come to a realization this is not the path I want. Yeah. For my life, I, I don't even want this. Yeah. Because the budget for that film was like 10 million. It no, it was five. five. Was it five? Five. five. And it and made, made hundreds and hundreds of millions. Yeah. Oh, it's a money-making machine. It's purely, purely cynical. Yeah. So you've got to feel the passion for your, your craft and your acting and movies and for parts you pick, you've got to feel it to enjoy it. Well, you know, you've got to pay the bills sometimes. Yeah. So it's a sort of an, I, 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 I've been kind of lucky in that some of the crap I've done, they, they you know, <laughs> it's like they, they go, okay, so uh, you're at the bottom of the list for, uh, they've, they've, they're making you an offer and you know when they're making me an offer, it's like my, my name, they've gone through everybody else. And they've come, so they've only, so they've only got two weeks before they shoot. It's like they, you've got, we've got Blackbeard and you're mm -hmm. shooting in Thailand for 11 weeks. And I'm mm -hmm. like, send me the script. And I'm uh -huh. like, oh, please, please, please God, make it good. Make it good. Uh -huh. And you open the script and you, and you read the first picture. You're like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. So you make a phone call because. I'm I'm smart enough to know that I'm that, that they've only got two weeks, so mm -hmm. they're at the end of their list. So I go, well, I'll, I'll do it if I can rewrite all my dialogue, and they go, yeah, okay, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> so now I can have some fun, uh -huh. you know, and 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 we're talking about a twenty million dollar project, and they're mm -hmm. just agreeing to yeah. let me rewrite my dialogue, mm -hmm. like they're desperate, and then the of course the producers like while I'm doing it, you know, when we're out there in Thailand, they're like. Can, can they call my, my agent going, can you tell them to like, you know, I said, but you agreed to it. Mm -hmm. Aha. Yeah. But you know what it says? And I made it better. Yeah. Because I added stuff, you know, yeah. I mean, it was such a pile of crap. But does that not say much about your character? Because people watching you and looking at Son, you're saying, nah, you didn't like that. It was a well, they wouldn't let me change a line. Piece of shit. People who are inspiring actors going, fuck me. I would, I would, people would wrap their right arm to be. Yeah. In that. There was no freedom in it. They, they yeah. were so afraid that, that if you tried to change one line, of their stupid script, you know, <laughs> that, you, that they would some, you would somehow spoil the formula for their success. Uh -huh. They were fucking terrified yeah. of, of, you know, you would, I would make, you know, pretty good ideas and they would yeah. just be like, well, you can't do that because, you know, and it was just like there was no freedom involved yeah. in it. So it was like you're shackled to this thing and it was stupid anyway because if you think about it, I'm a guy who goes to each room, right? And every time I'm like wondering, oh, you know, I, I, I can't forgive this person. So they, they, the one woman freezes to death. The next guy gets, you know, uh, the, you know, drowned in a pile of pig vomit. The next one is God knows what, <laughs> torn apart by this disgusting. And, and every time my character dithers about in a corner going, <laughs> you know, and like when he decides to do it, it's too late. The person's dead. What kind of a fucking character is that? <laughs> He's a scumbag. Uh, like, uh -huh. at least he should, you know, have some kind of a progression in mm -hmm. the story yeah. and become heroic or something. Uh -huh. That's a Scottish you know coming I mean? out, yeah. It's That's a Scottish coming out, That's yeah. crap. Uh -huh. Is, um, going forward for the future now, Angus, what's your plans? Where uh -huh. do you see yourself? What do you see yourself working on? Have you got any other new projects coming up? Well, I, I, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm hoping this does well so that, you know, I can raise funds. I have the, the next part of this movie, which is take, which, which, which is, would, you know, uh, take us to Bannockburn and him becoming king. I have that ready to go, mm -hmm. and it, and it's a it's a big budget movie. I also have a script which I've worked on for years because I you know I've been hanging out in Panama, and it's about the Darien expedition. It's about the story of these two thousand Scots who went to the jungle thinking they were going for paradise and end up dying in a, in in this hell. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, so I've got those two scripts. So you're sitting with that. So it's just a basically seeing the outcome of the yeah. Bruce and then going from there. Well, basically, you know, there's that saying. You know, you, 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 if you you have, you know, there's so many lows that while you're in the low, you got to find something to do. Yeah. Like write or paint or whatever it is that you love to do. So I did a lot of writing and I prepared a lot of things so that I'm ready 
for for that next high because yeah. as hamlet says the readiness is all yeah do you think the the the, the writing then and, and locking yourself away makes you sane kind of keeps you on a good path yeah. instead of slumping so basically you, you, you're on the ball then so as soon as this comes because you will get a high and then you'll come down but you've yes. got these other two to back it up yes do you think that becomes with more maturity as you get older yeah I think we're all very fragile uh, human beings and yeah. people have all kinds of things which go on and depressions and highs and lows and we're all you know in some way you know uh, 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 you, you know people mock mental illness all the time i see it online all the time what a yeah. mental idiot this da, da, da. And it's like you really shouldn't because we're all in the same boat yeah, that's a reflection we, we, can all, all... we all go there yeah. you know at night what, what happens to you when you wake up at 3 a.m it's called the hour of the wolf yeah. when your darkest fears come to get you what happens to you in the in the middle of the night when you wake up from that kind of horrible nightmare yeah. which is coming for you you know and then you're out for hours with anxiety and all of these mm -hmm. things that that is that is you know emotional instability it's mental illness yeah. it's things that we all have to cope with yeah and and we shouldn't mock it it's yeah, it, you can either not. take it and harness it and create something good out of it or you you will be subdued and you will be victimized by it yeah and we shouldn't turn it into some kind of a uh, an object of mockery mm -hmm. you know yeah definitely and i think people who you get your trolls and people who are negative, but I think that's just a reflection of people who are sad themselves. Yes, they are. Do you know what I mean? That's just a reflection of I'm, I'm insecure, yeah. so I see you above me, so I'm going to try and yes. bring you down to my so level. So to beat down. Yeah. It. Like it's like somebody who beats an animal uh -huh. because it's it's vulnerable and yeah. it's less it's more vulnerable mm. than them, and it makes them feel good. Yeah, so, so they can beat something. Yeah, up. that's I see trolls. Horrible. I see people who are vulnerable. When that's just, if they're saying sh negative shit, I just see they're in a bad place. I just see them as vulnerable, and I'll just send I'll love you before until you love yourself. Basically, that's all I say when people. Are, are, well, that's you know you, uh, that's big because a lot of people yeah. get they see they they see that as the they take it personally. And it's one of the big things is to not take. Yeah, but you get used to it. And I used to because I used to get ninety five percent positive, yeah, five percent negative, and I used to bite, I used to react. But I'm just yeah. giving them my energy, and yeah. now I'm just learning to actually deal with. It. I understand that people are on their own journey. Who the fuck yeah. are, are they? How why are they judge me? Is their life so perfect that they can yeah. judge other people? Of course it's not. They're yeah. just what you're doing is when you start becoming successful, you shine a light on their their misery and pain that they can't reach maybe your height. So they just try and bring you down yeah. and, and try and hurt you. So yeah, yeah I'm. I believe that, but I believe everybody else also got goodness in them. And I believe also people just need a wee spark to maybe ignite them to go. I want, because people, the things I'm doing as well. It's called love. But yeah, yeah, that's all we need, man. And I think that the things I'm doing, people will either look at it for inspiration, and other people will look at it and go, nah, the way they're coward away and shy away and just hate. But yeah. hopefully, what we're doing today, and even you coming on today speaking. But we've got to have the choice. Yeah. You've got to give people the choice that's the important part. yeah that's choices freedom, yeah yeah independence mm -hmm. so you you have it yeah would you like to finish up in anything angus before we i think we've uh, i think i've covered everything i think i've <laughs> um, but for your new impression. film coming out uh, glasgow dundee check out the dates i'll put the link on the uh, files yes. below where people can and you've got a song as well you want us to add to it as well i do i was asked to write by the national i was asked to write a song i was asked to write a piece of, if, if robert the bruce was around now what would he say about all of this and so it's coming out tomorrow in the national and, and I, I wrote a song to go with it yeah uh, written by uh, which the music was done by josh crudis and, and so that's out tomorrow if anybody wants Excellent. to we'll put I'll link the, it up yeah we'll put the links in here and we'll put the music it's a song up. of inspiration it's yeah. saying you know come on let's all get together yeah. here and like you know we got to see the bigger picture mm -hmm. the bigger picture yeah, you know, so we gotta we gotta see into we gotta see further than today or tomorrow or you know mm -hmm. we got to believe hope 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 and, yeah and and the dream yeah definitely Angus it's been yes. an absolute pleasure brother and I can't wait to see the film and I wish you all the best for the future thank, thank you. you.